Well, good morning. Uh, it's great to uh, be with you again uh, as we explore the Gospel of Luke and think about the King and his kingdom. Today was actually supposed to be a Vision Sunday and uh, we're going to be staying on that track. Uh, some of the different things that we normally do with Vision Sunday is a bit more complicated in lockdown. Uh, so I'm just going to look at the resurrection story again. And we're going to remind ourselves of the implications of the resurrection, what it means and how it was a catalytic moment in history that changed everything. And so let me pray for you and then we'll get stuck in um, to this passage of Scripture. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for your glorious Son. We thank you for his beautiful life. We pray that you might t teach us to really lean into Jesus in the complexity of this season, Lord, help us to reach out and to hold on that to that which is sure and certain, that our God reigns through the person of his Son. Help us, Lord, to apprehend who your Son is and to follow him faithfully and well. And we pray for the community of Riverston Baptist Church and anyone else who might be uh, listening in. We ask, Lord that you might give us revelation, that we might know Christ better and that your glorious hope might invade our hearts and, and sustain us in this season. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, as I said, this, this uh, ser service today was meant to be a Vision Sunday. So I want to think about our vision. Sometimes like, you kind of think in hard times, is this relevant or should we just park it you know, and speak directly into the season. But uh, as I thought about it more, you know, uh, one of the, the hard things about this this time is that we've, in some ways, we've lost a lot of the certainties in our lives, you know, and, and the normal patterns of our lives. And the future seems blurry and uncertain. And so it's um, really challenging to find our feet, find anchors. And so thinking about our mission and vision as a church, and more importantly, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, is something like an anchor we can hold on to and say, well, things might be rapidly changing. The future might not be real clear to me, but what is clear is what has been revealed in Scripture and what God is calling His church to be and to do. That is unchangeable reality. And so, is there anything more relevant than to dig into our vision and our mission as a church and re-explore the implications of the gospel? I liken it to, you know, being on a ship tossed to and fro. And, and when you're on a ship tossed to and fro, you usually grab hold of something to stabilize you. And maybe this opportunity to kind of dig deep into the revelation of Jesus is, is kind of spiritual act like that, reaching out for some kind of stability in an uncertain time. And that stability is the Lordship of Christ and the life he calls us to. That has not changed. That continues to be relevant. So let's think about the resurrection. Well, you, you might ask at this point, why did you skip over the cross? And um, that would be a fair question. The, the cross is super important. We actually looked at the account of the cross earlier in Easter on Good Friday, which probably isn't surprising to you. And, and we also looked at the resurrection. But today I, I really felt the need in order to close out this series on Luke's Gospel to really reflect on the implications of the resurrection. And included in that, of course, is the relevance and power of what God did through dying on the cross. And so let's think about this together. And, and, and I pray that it would be, a, like as I said, a, a course of stability and strength in your life in this season. So Luke tells us, really, that the implications of the resurrection are stark. <laughs> that the people of God from this day forward, from the moment of resurrection, have a new mandate. And that's to wait for the power of God in order that they might be witnesses to what God has done in his resurrected son. And so the resurrection becomes a catalytic moment that's meant to shape the rest of our 
lives. A while back, I'll, I'll try and unpack that a bit. A while back, I was listening to a, a podcast by Dan Cullen on history, hardcore history, and he spoke about these events in history that just seem to have an inordinate impact on the future. And so he, the, the great example that he cites is this um, Serb Bosnian assassinates an Austrian prince uh, in 1914. And after that, you know, a prince and his wife are assassinated. And after that moment, there's a bunch of things that happened that sparked the Great War, World War I. So out of that assassination emerges World War I. And I don't know if you know this, but fighting in World War I was a young Hitler. And when his nation surrendered, he became so angry that, you know, the aristocracy had let him down by surrendering and, and not being good Germans. That this kind of nationalistic zeal welled up inside of him and, and thus begun the kind of roots of Nazi Germany. And then, of course, a short time later in relative terms we entered into world war ii and the events that surrounded that and the cataclysmic event that that was and actually in the aftermath of world war ii what emerges is this division between because the russians on one side the west on the other this division between capitalists and communists and that reverberated into the cold war and and you know with the rise of china now we're seeing this un unfolding picture. And it, like, isn't that interesting? Well, it's interesting to me. I'm something of a history nerd to think that that little moment in time sparked so much. Well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that on steroids. It's the catalytic event of human history. It's when new creation invaded creation in the resurrection of God's son. And it's an awesome moment. And it changes absolutely everything. And actually, without the resurrection, without the resurrection, we should eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. You know, the resurrection is foundational to our faith. And so I want to think about that today, the catalytic event of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, um, by the time we reach the passage that was read to you earlier from Luke 24, we see that some of the disciples had already encountered a resurrected Christ. And there was rumors and stories, you know. And the disciples gathered together as a group uh, and they were talking about this. And, and some, I think, found it too good to be, be true, you know. They just couldn't come at it. But into that very scene of the disciples talking and reflecting about these strange kind of sightings of a resurrected king, Jesus gloriously manifests his presence among the disciples. He manifests his presence. <laughs> the resurrected Lord appears to them and he says to them what needed to be said at this point, right? When you conquered the grave and you appear, you, you've got to say something like this. He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And that was... I guess a word into the immediate sense of this fearful encounter with the resurrected king. But also it's a word that really is a fundamental unpacking of what the resurrection is all about. That through and because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, people can know peace with God and peace with one another. Isn't that a wonderful word? You know, when I was... I said a couple of weeks ago that a phrase hit me in the heart and the Spirit really spoke it into me. Well, this is the word, you know, into this cocktail of anxiety and feeling like, where are we headed? What's going on in our world? Uh, what's my future? The words, peace be with you, came to me from Luke's pen and stabbed me in the heart. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ is risen Lord. And because he's risen, come what may, no matter what else happens in human history, the peace of God can envelop us and the hope of resurrection life can be our stronghold. So Jesus says to the disciples, peace be with you. But they're so overwhelmed, you know, can you imagine it? They're so 
overwhelmed with joy and amazement. They simply cannot comprehend. They cannot comprehend what's taking place in front of their eyes. So Jesus invites them to look at his body, to see his wounds, to to inspect it's really I, he says, flesh and blood before you, risen from the grave. Friends, this is a really important thing for us to grasp. And the New Testament authors really want us to understand this. Jesus didn't live on in the hearts of his disciples or didn't just live on in the hearts of his disciples. I probably should say more precisely. Nor did he just appear as an apparition. Nor does his kind of his legend live on. No, he conquered the grave. He was physically restored. He stood before them. And Luke really drives that home, or Jesus drives that home by saying, Look, I'm, you know, this whole dying and raising to life, it's made me quite hungry. Have you got any fish? Like that's that's you know not an exact quotation. Uh, but he and he asked for something to eat, and it's like he's Clearly, clearly articulating to those before him some an astounding truth that God has risen, you know, risen his body from the grave. And because of that, they had this great hope of resurrection themselves. Themselves. Peace be with you indeed. And you know, like this seems to have come as a shock to the disciples, like his death came, seemed to come as a shock, you know, um, because he was always explaining, or well, uh, probably always is overstating it. On a number of different occasions, he tried to explain to them that he was destined to die and to be raised to life. But they were kept from seeing and really understanding what had happened. So much so that when it actually happens... It blows their mind. But it shouldn't have, because this was the... F- well, perhaps it should have. Um, but, but this was the fulfillment of the whole story. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not plan B or an afterthought or something tacked on because the Messiah plan didn't quite work out. No, it's, it's spoken of in the prophets. It's spoken of in the Psalms. It's the fulfillment of Scripture. God always had this plan and Jesus was presenting himself as the resurrected Lord to his disciples and saying, this happened to fulfill what God has always said would happen in his word. In his word. And then he tells the disciples the implications of his resurrection. He's soon going to leave them. But they will be clothed with power from on high. And they will have this new vocation. And their vocation will be to proclaim, to proclaim the forgiveness of sin and salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're getting a clear picture, aren't we? That this would be a moment in time that changes the direction of of the disciples life he didn't want for them to look back nostalgically to the time when jesus was with them and go wasn't that wonderful no he wanted to reshape their future by giving them the spirit and calling them to a vocation of living out the good news of the gospel i don't know when the, the Lordship of King Jesus came alive to you. I'll just, I'll just bore you with it. No, it's not boring at all. I'll tell you what happened for me. I grew up in a Christian family. My, my dad, like Ben's dad, is a, is a pastor. For some people, that, that kind of pastor's kid label is, is a burden. I, I never felt that. Uh, we grew up in a great church, predominantly Castle Hill, where there was a lot of love in the room, if, if, if I can be... Uh, honest, there was a lot of love in the room. I don't know how many times as a young person I had strangers, well, strangers to me, they weren't to my parents, but strangers come up to me and say, just because I was a pastor's kid, I pray for you every day. What a blessing. Like random people who I don't, I'm not aware of are praying for me and asking God to, you know, work in my life. And so 
I had a really positive experience of Christianity, but I'm not sure that I gave my heart to Jesus as a young person. I remember my one of my earliest memories of expressing my faith, uh, not in a real positive way, was uh, at Castle Hill Public School, um, telling other kids that they shouldn't swear or say the Lord's name in vain. I think I annoyed them a great great deal but I could I, for some reason I remember very early being riled by that and and that stirring in in my spirit something you know um, so I grew up in this church and I understood the stories of the Bible I understood what Jesus had done I understood that my my parents had a wonderful faith um, but I I remember a moment in time, a catalytic moment in time that changed my whole life. I was down at a park just down from my mum and dad's house. It was called Cocaine Reserve, oddly enough. I don't know why. And uh, I was with uh, my youth leaders and a bunch of my friends from youth group. And we were praying. We were having a prayer meeting. It's kind of a, a, a spontaneous opportunity for prayer after youth group we just drove by and we were like in this park and we were praying and in that time of fellowship with God in prayer I had an experience of the Holy Spirit uh, and I would say an unveiling of the resurrected Lord and in that moment that sounds grandiose but God by his spirit took hold of my heart and and in that moment he declared that Jesus was not just, you know, the savior of my father. <laughs> he wasn't just the product of my upbringing. He became in my heart, resurrected Lord and King. And, you know, very early on in, in that experience, I, I changed the trajectory of my life. Of, of course, falteringly, and I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but it was a, a massive change through encountering the resurrected King as my saviour, my Lord, not just, you know, mum and dad's saviour, mum and dad's Lord. And it's changed the trajectory of my life. And I just can't imagine my life without that moment in it. You know, friends, the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. It changes everything. And its message to us in this season is manifold. Uh, one is that word I mentioned earlier, peace be with you. You know, we are living in uncertain times. We are living in difficult times. I don't want to minimize that. That's, that's the reality. But you know how resurrection hope, it gives us hope, you know, in this season. Our future is unclear, at, you know, imminently, right? But our future in Christ is sure and certain. If you put your faith and trust in King Jesus as resurrected Lord, you have the hope of eternity. You have the hope of eternity. And that should shape everything you are and do now. I know it's hard. I know it's hard because the, the imminence of the struggle that we're going through is it's really ever present. But this hope that we have in Jesus means that even in this season, we can be confident about our future and what we are heirs of. And so I'd encourage you to accept the, the claims of Christ as the resurrected King. But I also want to encourage you, this moment in time called the disciples to a mission. And it most, most definitely calls us to a mission. We can't be the same. Now that we know God raised Jesus from the dead. We can't be the same and know the clothing with power from on high. No, faith in Jesus and the baptism of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit in our lives ought to prompt us to live a different kind of existence. Lives that, you know, where we're compelled outwards into our world. Uh, even if... It's virtually or whatever. <laughs> Being good news and not just speaking of good news. It's important we speak of good news. It's important that we say to people, our hope is in Jesus. 
But it's also important, isn't it, that we be good news, that we imbibe the witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. And so that's letting the Spirit reign in our lives, letting the Word of God speak into our hearts and the resurrected King shape our existence. And when we do that, you know, the kind of lives that we live, well, we understand, don't we, that one of the implications of the gospel is that God's people are called to love one another, to be marked by love as a chief characteristic in all that we are and all that we do because God loved us through his son. He calls us to be a loving community. And that's always an option available to us. It's always an option to love your family and friends. It's always an option to love people by sending messages, you know, trying to connect with them in ways that you can, being understanding and forgiving if you catch people on a bad day, you know. It's always an option to embody the core truth that the resurrection of Jesus means that we ought to be marked by love. You know, this resurrection event also reminds us that through faith in the son we become sons and daughters of the living god we were part of god's forever family to use a phrase that ben likes to use we're part of god's forever family through faith in the son and we receive his life-giving presence his holy spirit to remind us who we are and of course he calls us to serve And to give of ourselves, to love the people around us, to enact the life of Christ and be shaped by the person of Christ in our day-to-day expressions of worship. So I just want to encourage you, it's Mission Sunday, it's Vision Sunday. And the, the text, Luke's Gospel, has reminded us that God has raised his son to life. And that through faith in him, we experience the power of Holy Spirit. So I just want to encourage you, be about the mission of God. Sure, it requires more creativity, (laughs) a bit of ingenuity in this current lockdown season, but be about the mission of God. How can I do that? How can I connect people in my church? How can I love people who don't know Jesus yet? How can I embody the life of Christ in my household? All these kind of questions should permeate us as implications of the resurrection of King Jesus. My prayer for us as a church family that we would stay the course, stay on mission. Continue to pursue God's will for you because God has raised his son from the dead. Amen. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, almighty God. I pray for the people out there that the Spirit of Jesus would minister to those who are feeling anxious and fearful. That you would remind each one of us, Lord, of the simple truth that because God has raised his Son from the grave, we can know the peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you for the hope that the resurrection gives us and we pray that that hope might might fill our hearts and minds at this dark time, sustaining us and giving us life and giving us strength and resilience. And we pray, Lord God, that we would be more loving, faithful, God-honoring, servant-hearted people for the glory of your Son's name. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me. Go in peace. God bless you all. Uh, The next coming weeks, uh, Ben's going to be preaching. And so it's going to be looking at Habakkuk and Haggai, and that's going to be awesome. So make sure you tune in. Stay connected. Feel free to reach out to us at any time. We'd love to hear from you. God bless. Bye.